welcome back to my channel and happy new year happy new decade now i absolutely abhor new year's resolutions i think they are just there to set us all up for failure and to make us feel crappy about ourselves at a time of year when we always already feel crappy about ourselves because we over at christmas overindulge blah 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 but saying all of that i am going to give you one resolution one business resolution that both you and i are going to keep okay you meaning you in your business and me in my business too we're going to do it together and that resolution is ready for it we are going to stop playing small that's right we are going to shut off all of those limiting beliefs that hold us back and hold us back from being the person and the business and the brand that we want to be my limiting belief that goes round and round in my head the whole time is who do you think you are? It's like literally on repeat over and over in my head and it keeps me small. It stops me from playing big enough. 2020 is the year I'm going to shut that off while you shut yours off too and we're going to really think about playing big and to stop keeping small. Now in 2019 I had a big year, um, a very big year. I launched Glossier um, London pop-up which was huge if you haven't seen it i'll put the link below um so that you can check that out um it was a national coverage driver big deal for the brand um also i launched victoria beckham beauty to the world again i'll put the links below and i also had the pleasure of working with drew barrymore to launch her budget beauty range flower beauty in Superdrug. It was actually a highlight of my life, let alone of my career. So I'm telling you this because what I'm going to do is really share with you this year all of those um, strategies and all of that sort of know-how that I put into place for those big brands that you can adopt into your brand and to really power your brand to the next level. A minute with you, you're not on your own anymore. You've got some support, you've got some guidance. So um, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my weekly updates. After all that rambling, let's crack on because today's video is all about the top five strategies that you can put into place to really elevate your online social media marketing. Are you ready? The five social media marketing strategies that all beauty brands need to adopt in order to be relevant, to grow your brand awareness, to grow your audience and your customer base, and to increase your engagement on social media. You don't need to have deep pockets, that's the good news, but you do need to really focus on these five areas. And if you do this, then I promise you, your social media will look very different in 12 months time than it does right now. And so let's get to it. Okay, so my number one tip, and this is the most important tip, this is why I've given it the number one tip, is to use your authentic voice. Now, that means don't try and be someone else, okay? Or don't try and be someone who you think that you should be. Um, you know, not only is this completely unsustainable in the long term, but it is exhausting and your followers will see right through you. They can spot a fake a mile away. So stop trying to be like everyone else. Stop trying to be a Me Too brand. There are enough Me Too brands out there trying to be like everyone else and copying what everyone else is doing. You be authentic to you. That means using your own language that you would use, using your own, bringing out your personality, letting that shine through. And it really means that you sort of embrace who you are and that you really let that shine through in all of the content that you make and in all of your comments, all of your videos, anything that you put out there on social, it has to be authentically you. So remember, it's some old saying like, be yourself because everyone else is taken. And I promise you that is going to hold you in good stead if you stick with that number one tip, be you. My second tip is to focus on relationships and building relationships with your followers and your would-be followers. You know, think about it as a bit like, um, I've said it before, a bit like a relationship that you have with 
your spouse, you know, or someone that you want to be your spouse or someone that you want to be um, in a relationship with for a long time, which is what you want your customers um, to be in a long relationship with your brand. What you don't want is you don't want a one night stand. You don't want a quick fling. You don't want, uh, you know, something that's just a fly by night. You want a long, fulfilling, loyal relationship. OK, so really think about that and think about what it takes to sustain a long, fulfilling relationship. It takes commitment. It takes um, compromise. It takes reaching out and sometimes not knowing what you're going to get back. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time. And it is something that doesn't, it constantly needs fueling. Relationships need fueling. You can't just have, you know, a great week and then be like, okay, with your husband or your spouse or whatever. And then the next week, you know, or the next three weeks, it's awful. It's something that you have to really nurture and develop. So really think about that. Once you've got a customer or they're, they're in your brand or they've visited you for the first time, that should be the first, the start of your relationship with that customer. It is not the end of the relationship. The sale is not the end. The sale is the beginning. So really think about that in terms of how you sustain your own personal relationships. I mean, if you have a friend and you don't see, or speak to her for a year do you think that she's gonna you know be there for you in a time of crisis or do you think she's going to um wonder where you are or what's happened and feel neglected and feel hurt it's kind of that sort of feeling that you need to bring into your relationships or building your relationships with your customers so really try to look through um this tip through the lens of what value you are bringing to your followers like what you're giving them that's going to enhance their lives make their day better make them feel good about yourselves and what stories are you telling on your channels that she's going to be interested in right um because what you're doing by doing this is you're really building your relationship but you're also building trust with your authentic voice as we talked about earlier use your authentic trust trust <laughs> use your authentic voice build trust, be interested in her, give her or him, give them value. It's what you do when you're not trying to sell things to them that count more than when you are trying to sell to them, okay? So really think about relationships and building relationships with your customers. Okay, so my third tip is gonna be something that a lot of you, including myself, just give a big sigh of relief because one thing I hate doing is selling stuff to people or feel like I'm selling stuff to people. Although ultimately that's what we're all doing, right? At the end, we're all trying to um, sell our products or our services or whatnot. But when you are in the social media space, when you are looking to grow your social media audience and your engagement and your loyalty and your brand awareness and all of those things, stop thinking about what you're selling. Stop thinking about the hard sell. Stop thinking about the product on the page or on the post with just the price underneath with why it's great and blah 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 stop thinking it in terms of the direct selling and think about storytelling you know if you tell your stories on your channels and demonstrate your expertise the service that you give your product superiority if you give valuable information education behind the scenes access to your brand if you give that in a storytelling capacity so you tell um, the story of your product rather than product on page hard sell this is where it costs this is where you can get it whatever why don't you tell a story around why that product exists and it may not be there's a picture of um, the product it may be a picture of someone's skin it has transformed if it's a skincare product you know when you really really build a relationship with your customers you do it by giving them more you give them as I mentioned earlier about giving them value it's the stuff again I said it earlier that you give them for free that makes them think wow if they're giving all of this stuff for free imagine what they would give me if I actually paid for it it must be gold so really think about telling stories rather than selling products look through that lens tell your stories in an authentic voice and in a way that builds relationship, that will build trust. And that's the way that you should be communicating your brand online and your engagement will absolutely increase if you take that view, okay? You're not selling, you're telling stories. You're a storyteller, not a seller. So my fourth tip is consistency. 
it's totally boring, it's a boring word, but it's absolutely vital that when you're posting content that you are consistently delivering. People know what to expect from you, they, why, they know why they follow you, they know what they're going to get and that's the key to getting your engagement up. Consistency. Now if I were you I would aim, if we're talking about Instagram, to post once a day on grid as well as to tell around five stories at least. The more you put into social media, the more that you get out of it. Don't worry about crafting posts that are going to get you the most engagement or the most likes, When the, because when the likes get taken, it won't make any difference. But really focus on value, authentic voice, building relationships, telling stories and consistency. OK, and a lot of that consistency is to do with volume. You know, you need to be creating volume, a lot of content because there's so much out there. And in order for you to um, stand out and get seen, you need to keep feeding the beast. OK, so a lot of that is to do with good planning and making sure that you plan in advance rather than just posting on the hop and all of those kind of things. So having a social media plan, maybe it's just something that you plan seven days in advance. So on Monday, it's Motivational Monday. Let's tap into that. Let's post a motivational quote. On Tuesday, maybe we'll call Tuesday Transformational Tuesday and we'll focus on a product or service and we post that. On Wednesday, it's that sort of hump day when people start getting a bit depressed. Is there a lifestyle message that, or some piece of advice that we've been given that we would like to share people that might make their lives a bit nicer or a bit happier? You know, really think about what value that you can bring and turning up and being there consistently for your customers, okay? What value you're bringing to them and that consistency will really help to build your engagement and build your relationships. So really think about planning in advance and getting all of that content ready so that you can just be consistent with it, okay? Okay, so my fifth and final... <laughs> okay, so my fifth and final tip to increase your social media engagement for beauty brands is to tart up your posts. If you take the time to edit your images and create your own designed posts, you will get more engagement. You are in the beauty business after all. And what you look like on the outside and the care you take on the outside counts in this space. Remember, you know, you want to, especially things like Pinterest and um, Instagram, they're a visual medium, they're visual first. So you really need to make sure that the visuals that you're presenting to the world really reflect your brand authentically, um, but that they also look good because you're in the beauty business and the beauty business ostensibly is about looking good and also obviously about feeling good. Now there are some very simple ways that you can do that. Um, I use an app called Instasize on my phone that allows me to sort of trim and frame posts that just make them look a little bit slicker and cut out bits that I don't want. It takes seconds to use, costs pennies and I, I, I must use it at least five times a day. There's also apps like Canva, I've talked about them before I'll link below in the post that I did about um, Canva and the tools that I use. Canva is amazing. It's a design tool with lots of templates on it that allows you to create your own um, social media posts. Could be Facebook, Pinterest, um, Instagram. They're all on there that you can just overlay with your own message on your own graphics and it just looks like you are super, super on it. So really take that time to make your grid or your post or your Instagram or whatever it is that you're doing make it look slick it will give you it will pay back dividends it will make your professional it will make you look more professional it will make you look more enticing and honestly all of these apps and all of these things out there again that i'll link below are super easy to use i can use them and they won't cost you very much money at all okay so there are my five tips for increasing your social media engagement um they will work so stick to them let me know what you think please do feel free to comment below if you've got any comments um, and do follow me on um, Instagram. I am at beautybeatcoms, also on Pinterest at um, PR Decoded. And don't forget to subscribe. There is some big, big news coming from me soon and I want you to be the first to hear about it. Have a good week. Whoa, be a boss. Go and boss.
your week and I will see you next week.